if you remember, folks, the first method, okay, this is a picture of the cladogram that we made yesterday, correct? So our first method started out with cells as the one characteristic that every one of these organisms had went all the way up to opposable thumbs where humans were the only one. Okay? So if I look at this, what would you tell me was the difference between a catfish and a tiger? Who can tell me a difference between a catfish and a tiger? Brandon? The catfish does not have legs, nor does it have hair. The tiger has both of those. Correct? Now, this new method is the other most common type of a clotogram that I have seen. And I call it, method two, the bracket method. Why do I call it the bracket method? Well, what we're looking like, folks, what we're going to see is this is going to branch and do stuff like this and have this and have here and so forth like this you know what that looks like to me what just ended up last week or on monday huh what just happened on monday sports wise yeah the ncaa tournament doesn't this look like tournament brackets right there that's why I call this the bracket method because these to me look like tournament brackets so when I refer to the bracket method this is how we do it now what we are going to do is we are going to make a bracket method of the same diagram that we used yesterday so here is the Venn diagram, okay? Here is the Venn diagram, and don't do this, Dylan, on 87. Turn back a page, okay? Down at the bottom of, nope, don't do it there. Bracket method is the bottom of 84, okay? There's a place to put this so we can see the diagram. So look at the bottom of where you made your other diagram. We are going to make this bracket method. Now, you'll be able to look at this because you have the Venn diagram on the opposite page, right? So where are we going to start? I'm going to draw this line down at the bottom of that page. Okay, down towards the bottom is where we're going to start and what are we going to start with well i make my bracket as so okay i make this bracket here and right here right here at this point is going to be my very first thing you see my arrow okay my arrow right there what is my very first trait on my Venn diagram cells right cells so what what species in this diagram has cells and nothing else huh a slug so at that line right there at the very end of that line i am going to write the slug now right here i'm going to start building my next bracket Excuse me. I'm going to build my next bracket. So I'm going to put my line there, and I'm going to put the other one. Now notice, 
Notice out here that I have these at the same length there. They're ending at the same spot. So what's my next trait? What's my next trait I'm going to be dealing with? Jonathan? The backbone. So I'm going to put my arrow, and I'm going to put the backbone. What animal has a backbone and has cells but nothing else? How about the catfish, right? Now, once again, I'm going to build a new bracket. See where my end is here. What's my next trait? Jamie, what's my next trait? Hair. Hair. What's after backbone on your Venn diagram? What's after backbone on our Venn diagram? Legs. Okay. So legs is next. What has cells? What has a backbone? What has legs but nothing else? The frog. So what now is my next step? What's my next step? Okay, well, I got to build what? I got to build a new bracket. So my next step is building my new bracket. My trait is? My trait is what? Hair. Okay. And what is my species? What's my organism that has hair, that has legs, that has a backbone, and has cells? A tiger, right? And finally, I build my last bracket. Okay. What is my last bracket here? Opposable thumbs, right? Opposable thumbs. And what goes at the end of that bracket? What goes at the end of that bracket? A human. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you have just built a bracket method cladogram. Now, how do we read this? How do we read this? Okay? What is the closest related species to the tiger. What would you say? Okay. It's, it's in the middle, right? It's in the middle, right? Which do you think are more closely related? The human and the tiger or the tiger and the frog? Okay. I would agree with Lewis. Okay. What two are going to be more close related? These two. Okay? These two. Now, what's a tiger going to be more closely related to? A frog or a catfish? Frog. Okay? What's a catfish going to be more closely related to? The frog or the slug? Probably going to be the frog because the frog branched off of the, the catfish, didn't it? Okay. Now, what's going to be more closely related? A slug, a frog, or a human? Which ones are more closely related? A slug, a frog, or a human? Probably going to be the frog and the human. Okay? Why is that? Because they have more things in common. Okay? Does a slug have a backbone? No. Does a human? Yes. 
Does a slug have legs? No. Does a human? Yes. Okay? So that's why they're going to be more related. The only thing that the frog and the slug have in common is what? Cells. Okay? The only thing that catfish and the tiger, what do they have in common? The catfish and the tiger. Well, they both have cells, they both have backbones, right? Okay. What about the frog? Who's the frog more closely related to? The catfish or the tiger? What'd we say? I would say the tiger and why? Okay. Because does a catfish have legs? No, does a tiger have legs? Yes. Okay, that's the reason, all right, as we branch out more and more top to top, okay? Do you understand how I'm reading that? So, this is what we call the what method? The bracket method, okay? The bracket method. Now, what I want you to do,